Shane's just walking around backstage, killing time, nothing to do. Randomly bumps into Buff Bagwell, his chosen challenger for his championship of his promotion on their biggest match, on, well, first match on Raw. And he wishes him luck. Now, as you've probably figured out by now, the story, the, the, the legend of the show is that the invasion was going fine. They had a bad match and it died. And technically, uh, well, the, the part about a bad match is true, as we'll get to, but this invasion was not going fine, and this show was not going fine, and this show sucked. Buff Bagwell shows up. Now, I, I don't know how big the crossover audience was, but I'm sure a lot of people watching Raw were seeing Buff for the first time. He's very, very muscular, and he's, he has some star presence, and he had gear, he has wacky hat and sunglasses. He was not just a guy, but he's not the tallest dude in the world. Right. And he walks up to Shane, who's a big man. And Shane's towering over Buff, looking down at him. And I watched Buff for five years or six years on Nitro, whatever it was. I never thought to myself, wow, Buff is small. First time Buff's ever on Nitro or on Raw. And I think, dude, he looks tiny next to Shane. He's just wee. So Shane wishes Buff luck. Buff doesn't rely on luck. He relies on skill. That's why he's Buff. (laughs) Since when? I don't don't know. (laughs) That's why he's buff, and he's the stuff, and that's why you'll have a new WCW champ. And Shane's like, okay. Cool, bro. Good luck, he says, after the whole speech about luck. Yeah. <sighs> Is there a foghorn in the background now? It ain't over that, here. I think it's a Craig's. That's that's the train. Okay. It's a train going by. The announcers wish us goodbye. Say whatever happens from here on out, this show is... Becomes WCW. Whatever happened from this moment out. All right. Well. Here we go, everybody. Yeah. They've got WCW graphics and pyro. And Shane comes out and does a promo. Welcome to WCW. And everyone goes, boo. He introduces the commentators. And it's Scott Hudson and Arn Anderson with Stacey Keebler because they figure they won't possibly boo Stacey Keebler. Well, they were right about that. Yep. So... The referee of all of all the WCW officials to pick for this match. Yep. It's Nick Patrick. Oh yeah. He is appropriately booed. Nick Patrick. And then they can't just do the match. No, no, no. Regal and Tajiri have to interrupt and say, We cannot stop this match, but as commissioner, I can I can have security escort you out of the building. So Shane says, That's fine. I don't need the spotlight. And I swear to God, he leaves in a spotlight. Yeah. So, they do go to commercial, they come back, it's Booker T versus Buff. I will say one thing for this. Watching Booker T and Bagwell on this show, after watching every episode of Night Show, you realize how much better the production value on Raw was. Oh, sure. Yeah, but you know what? Let me say a few things right here. First off, when they introduced the announcers, and Stacy and Nick Patrick, and they're all coming out to their WCW music, I was like, it actually felt like Nitro for a second. I remembered those Nitro shows, which for a few years were awesome. And I was kind of a little bit excited. But then what I noticed, Vinny, was that, yes, the production is a lot better. But you were bringing out WCW and doing WWF production. That ain't WCW. No. Like, if you're going to bring the like announcers out and everything like that, I mean... They would never in a million years have done this because it's Kevin Dunn. But I would have had, like, whoever was in charge of WCW production put the cameras where they would be for WCW, shoot it the same way, everything, the Mm -hmm. whole nine yards. Preferably the same WCW ring, but I don't think they could have taken it down and put it up in time. But anyway. No. So the match starts, and it is a legendary match to the point where, the hell is that guy's name? It was a Canadian guy that interviewed Bret Hart in 2000. Uh, he had that show on TSN. What the hell was his name? Oh, Help me out know. here. Michael Landsberg. Yeah. I don't know if it was Landsberg himself thought this or that he reported that other people said this, but it was like the word was this was the worst match of all time. Mm. Bro, fuck. What has happened to wrestling if this at that point was the worst match of all time? This match wasn't very good, and Bagwell got blown up fast. Fast. And they did like a two-minute chin lock, which the funny thing is Vince has probably thrown his headsets on the ground, but in, in 2020, like, he has Corbin do that shit on every fucking SmackDown. But they go out there, and I'm not going to say it was good. 
It wasn't good. But it fucking wasn't that bad. But yes, the crowd turned on it. And the other funny thing is, when you look back now, bro, I was at that WrestleMania where they turned on Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns, and they were throwing shit around, and they turned on that match harder than anything I've ever seen turned on in my fucking life. This, it was like, there were a few boring chants. There were a couple this match sucks chants. They booed a lot. But it was like 95% of the Roman Reigns matches I saw between like 2015 and 2020. It was fucking way worse than this. Now granted, it's all time and place. And in the time and place, I mean this was a disaster. An epic disaster. But it is amazing when you look at the disasters that we've seen over the last 20 years. This is downright fucking tame. Like... I see matches on Raw on a regular basis. Nia Jax and Lana on Raw Monday was way worse than this fucking match. Way worse. You know, in the building that night, it seemed a lot worse than it did watching it on TV um, yesterday. They probably turned the fucking sound down. I would imagine that was the case, but... It was the way that things went after the match that... Th this is... Yeah, that's, that's the key. When yeah. you wa go back and watch it now, like Brian said, it's a below average match. It would be a four on the granny scale, I think it was pretty safe to say. Sure. But it, it's not like an all-time stinker of a match or anything. It's no Survivor Jenna or Rebel and TNA or, or whatever. But It'd be like a star. Yeah. Yeah. Star yeah. and a half. Yeah. When you go back... So if you go back and watch only this match... You'll think, what's the big deal? Mm -hmm. If you watch the entire episode, you realize these guys were screwed from the moment they woke up that day. They had no and hope <laughs> when they woke up. From the moment they bought their contracts. Yes. They, they were dead in the water. Everything from the opening pyro to the very end of the match to what happens after the match, which we'll get to here, to the very end of the show was designed to set them up to fail. And and honestly, during the match, the crowd didn't start come becoming restless until they locked on they locked locked on a chin lock, and then yeah. the crowd started to get restless and started chanting "boring." When Buff started, started to do multiple chin locks, plural. Yes. That's that's when the thing was was beyond saving. But right. So I'm watching this thinking because I, I remembered how the show ended, but I don't remember how the match ended. So I'm thinking, well, this is not going well. But in the end here, at least, Booker T is going to do the spin Rooney, hit the bookend or the scissors kick, whichever they want to do. He'll win. At least he'll be a champion here. Silly, naive, young Vincent. What a fool. Mm -hmm. Booker does the spin Rooney. And people do start to cheer. But they're not cheering for him. They're cheering for Steve Austin and Kurt Angle, who attack for the DQ. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, why, if you're telling me it's a historic match, and I'm getting to watch the first WCW match on Raw, and then it ends when WWF guys come out and destroy everyone, well, why would I ever care about anything with the letters W or C or W in it ever, 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 ever again? Well, quite frankly, That's worse was, than the match! It was apropos. A bunch of dudes ran in, and it was a DQ in the main event of a WCW show. <laughs> that's not the last time, the first time that happened. That's true. So... Buff joins in. So it's Steve Austin and Kurt Angle and Buff Bagwell all working together be to beat up Booker T. And you know, again, spoiler, Buff doesn't last long. My brain snapped watching that trio all work together. But then we cut away from the beating for the real main event of the show, which is can Vince McMahon get laid? So they're in the laundry room now. They begin oh, wait, to hold on a second. Didn't they, didn't they, they beat up Booker and they threw him out of the building, right? Later, yes. later. Oh, that's later? Yes. Oh, I guess it is at the very end. Oh, okay. yes. How are you talking about it? If you want to talk about it now. Ah, who cares? So Vince and Tori begin to do what I can only describe as porn film role, uh, porn film foreplay. Okay. And Vince is, I guess, trying to be seductive. I can't Dude, imagine. If you made a porn like this, that fucking company's going out of business. <laughs> I can't imagine Jesus. anyone being. Attracted to what Vince is doing is growling and grunting and talking about Mr. Mac Daddy. I like aggressive women and I like aggressive WWF superstars. Call me. You're gonna you're gonna climb the ladder till you're right on top of Mr. Mac Daddy. Yeah. Like what the fuck? And he's she's taking his shirt off and he begins essentially I'm praying to, to climax. He doesn't walk in. I'm praying. <laughs> dude, fucking dude. Paisley doesn't run up the stairs. 
I swear to God, my wife had been home five minutes when this came in. But that, oh, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. And she asked what was going on, and I tried as best I could to explain. So, eventually, you should Tori... You said you were watching porn. It would have like, been it'd more, be a lot easier more to explain. Are you watching WWE? No, it's porn, I swear! Oh, I'm watching <laughs> pornography dear her in the living room. It's not Vince McMahon. So, Tori tells Vince to close his eyes. And he turns around. He's talking about, I got a big surprise for you, Tori. She tears Arr. off his pants. She literally yes. tears off his underwear. He's got a big surprise for her. Yes. And he turns around, and she has magically turned into, into Linda McMahon. And to be fair, the crowd went crazy when they saw Linda. Yes. And Vince immediately, without skipping a beat, says, I'm a changed man. Mm-hmm. And Linda is giving him this look like this ain't the first time. Damn it, Vince, again! Wow. <laughs> and, of course, he's flipping out, and then he kicks a washing machine, but his pants are around his ankles, so he does a pratfall. Yeah. Everybody laughs. And, of course, the storyline here is that Linda and Tori were in cahoots to set up yes. Vince. So I guess Linda, Linda could get a divorce. She could get a fucking divorce without this, but that's beside the point. <laughs> Then they were going to split the two companies. And they shoot the angle after the show. And when the show's over, Vince decides, fuck this. I ain't giving them my fucking raw show. Bullshit. The only never thing happens. You, the only yeah. thing you guys missed is before the clothes became removed, Vince reaches over to his ring finger and pulls off his yes. wedding ring and slips it into his pocket. He, he says something about it. I, I won't be needing this or something. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, on top of everything else, it just occurred to me, the show opened with Shane McMahon saying that if Austin interfered in the main event, Linda would be very upset. It's so true. we'll see if that, that comes up on SmackDown. But anyway, Booker T is still being beaten. It's been five minutes. Some oh. random person is peeking through a door. <laughs> Who is that? I don't know. The that door's cracked times. and they're like looking through it in this beating. I'm like, are you an actual worker here and you don't know what the fuck's going on? There were a couple times when uh, when the referee came out to talk to Bradshaw and tell them Tess was talking to Booker T. When there's someone behind him in the doorway and they kind of like slowly stepped to the side. So, by the way, I didn't even mention this. Uh, for the TV viewers at home, if you're watching the WCW main event here on Raw and hearing Art Anderson and Scott Hudson, noted longtime WCW employees, and you'd like to hear them what they have to say to promote your favorite stars, your heroes, your your the guys you love to cheer, the guys you love to boo, introduce them to a new audience. Too bad they spent the entire match talking about the McMahon's. That was the entire story of it. So Booker is beaten and 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 beaten. They throw him out of the building. And then Buff Bagwell is celebrating with Steve Austin and Kurt Angle. He, like, slaps him on the shoulder and gives him a high five. And they look at him, and they whip his ass, and they throw him out that door, and he is never seen again. You can actually hear people laughing. Actually, he is seen again. But you can hear people laughing because is he? it's sunny. Yeah. So the story with Buff is... I believe he makes one more appearance because the APA beats the shit out of him and they put him through a table. Okay. Uh. Because this led to his mother calling and asking if he could have some time off. Gotcha. And bitching about his transportation. Ah, good, good. You can imagine how well that went over. Yeah. And then he was backstage and he got in an altercation with the Hurricane. Okay. Shane Helms. And I believe he threw a frozen water bottle at him. I may be misremembering some of this, but... Yeah, this is pretty much the beginning and the end. This is Buff Bagwell's inaugural brawl. The first and the last. Yeah. And then he's out of there. And as I remember, on SmackDown the next night, they had two WCW matches on the show. Well, you know, those who don't learn from history. And by the way, did I mention when they threw him outside, the sun was out? Yes. Yeah. What the fuck? The you can actually hear the audience laughing when they open the door and it's sunny. Well, well, the Brian, show starts was, at 4.30. Yeah, here. Oh, was it 4.30? And it was yeah. in Tacoma in June. All right. For some reason, I thought that it was actually 10 o'clock. Oh, our time. no. No, the show's, the show's How the actually... How the fuck am I supposed to know? I wasn't there. Because I don't know what time the show started. Life. Brian, it's always three hours later here, or earlier I here. know. Get out of here. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. 
Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the join button, sign up today. You can also click subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.